No, it's, a, it's about a 45 minute moped ride. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you measure things, how long is a moped ride. So uh, yeah, so if you have some free time, it's, uh, it's uh, I think the, uh, it's on the website, you can, not on the website, it's on the Facebook where, where it is. And um, yeah, just like if, you, if you're adventurous, pay the, uh, pay a, there's a lot of moped taxi drivers, just pay them, jump on the back, and they'll take you a 45 minute drive. And uh, send pictures back, we'll love to see how it's going over there. Who are your, your donors? Are they um, people in Vietnamese descent here in the United States, or do, do you have any corporate donors? Uh, yeah, they're all those, but the biggest the biggest base to start out with was the expat, the, the Vietnamese expat, um, and then um, then uh, uh, through that uh, and through the relationship building, it's uh, it's been beyond just the Vietnamese expat. It's uh, it's people that have affinity to uh, social work and maybe because of uh, Vietnam maybe an affinity to that particular region so uh, and then having uh, having city council help uh, having city council recognition has helped kind of open up those uh, those, those leads more uh, corporation um, there's been very small and I like to think of they do an annual fundraiser uh, and uh, uh, the annual fundraiser raises about, uh, I think, about fifty thousand dollars each fundraiser, and the corporations tend to be the ones that are giving out the the, uh, the gifts for raffle. Mm -hmm. They do they, they rely a lot on uh, uh, traditional fundraising, uh, doing auctions, uh, doing raffle tickets. So the corporate has not written a check per se, but they've given goods. So that's what we've been uh, uh, relying on. But if, you, if any of you guys are in the corporate world that wants a corporate social responsibility project, we would love to be adopted. Mm -hmm. Can yes. I just one thing? So there must be a lot of projects you need in Vietnam. How do you prioritize the, you know, the, you know, the allocation of resources? Right. Uh, there are a lot of prior priority, uh, a lot of needs. And we are probably one drop in the ocean. Um, but uh, you guys are probably too young to, to remember this, but there was an old movie with the, the Brady Bunch woman, I don't know what her name is. She goes, uh, you know, I'm not a saint, I, I'm, a, I'm a person. I can only do one difference at a time. And if that, if that makes a difference, I'm gonna do that. And that's the philosophy that we, we do. Um, having said that, uh, both my parents are orphans, so they have an affinity towards that a little bit. But uh, it's not about that, it's about, um, um, the, the ones that are most, like I said, one of the one of the examples that they try to, to kind of focus on prioritize is if 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 you have a breadwinner and that person is out of commission and the whole family is dependent on that, then that's the cases they go for because they they, 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 they they understand the importance of having a, a, a breadwinner that goes to work, bring home the, the funds and takes care. And these are families that are intergenerational families too. It's not just you know wife and three kids. It's wife, three kids, the cousins, the grandparents, the grand cousins. It's, it's a big, it's a deep, it's a deep uh, um, layer of history, of a family. So this one person is, you know, supporting this whole structure. So that's kind of like where they're. That's their number one. That uh, the number two are just um, um, uh, cases where um, I don't have like a, a forty dollar surgery can make a difference in someone's eyes. That's the case that they go for. It's like, you know, they, they can't they can't they can't solve you know uh, like the water uh, the water situation because that that's that's huge. But you know, if a forty dollar surgery can help a woman restore her eyesight, I mean that is just powerful. So that's the case they go for. Um, and um, and what they do use is they use intermediaries in the country to kind of help sort this out. And the, the intermediaries are the established relationships that they had with either. Uh, Catholic nuns uh, or uh, Buddhist, uh, and so there, it's not. It's not. Um, there's no denomination in the work they do, but they they tend to believe that people are faith based. You kind of you kind of have a sense of trust a little bit. So so you so that's their intermediaries. So they they rely on those intermediaries as well to say, you know, here's I, I know the population. I live here. I believe it. Uh, this is what we need to help with, and that's where they. So, but they don't, they just don't jump on it. They got, they take that and then they, they evaluate and make sure that it's validated. But that's how they kind of figure out what the needs are. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And then now the Hamlet Center is kind of like because uh, to your point, yeah, they're they're um, they feel like the service delivery can't sustain itself forever. Um, now they feel like you know maybe if you, if you can have a Hamlet Center where other NGOs are coming in and doing the work, maybe that'll help to scale it more. Uh, when you have a Hamlet Center, um, you can bring in you know doctors without border and do these treatments, or bring in optometrists without borders or dentists without borders, have them kind of have the space to do it at a central point where the community comes in, that's probably be able to scale it more. So they're they're so they are looking at those um, those avenues uh, as well. Um, so that's, that's that's how they prioritize. Great. All right. Well thank you very much again. Okay. Thank you. Uh, really interesting.